Welcome Sagittarius, thanks so much for joining me and welcome to the song series. This is a series of videos where I've been dedicating a song to each sign and this song basically represents the energy that's contained within that sign. You know, by doing this song series I'm really showing that hermetic principle of as above so below, you know, that the energies that are out there are actually being mirrored here on earth you know we're expressing these energies through our art through our systems through our thinking uh, through ourselves every single day so if you've been with me throughout the journey you'll know that we started in Aries and I'm just going to write you in here Sagittarius I always write down where the sign is oh you're not going to fit there we go I think I've just about fitted in. You might not be able to read my messy writing, but we started our journey here in Aries. We've gone all the way down through, we've fallen through, uh, down to the depths of winter, and we've come to your sign, Sagittarius. We are really down here in the depths of winter, deep dark winter, you know, where the light is less. And really from Libra through to Pisces, this is where the light is less and it means that we all have to band together. This is more collective energy, groups, you know, collective consciousness. Um, and we're going to get to some of that as we discuss your sign. So I'm going to do a quick recap on the sign before I give you your song. You are ruled by Jupiter. Your element is fire. You are symbolized by the archer. And your motto is I philosophize. Now, if you were just with me in Scorpio, you would have seen that their motto is I control. You guys are I philosophize. And you most certainly do. The original ninth house rules higher knowledge, religious institutions, universities, truth, fortune, foreign travel. Okay, so there's a lot of activity going on here. The song that I've dedicated to you is, and you know, as for each sign, I've been discussing how easy or hard it was in my research to come up with the song. In some signs, say for example Leo, I had to shortlist a bunch of songs. There were heaps of songs for that time. Just incredible. Everyone's singing about the sun. You know, it, it's just amazing. There were a lot of uh, options at that part of the zodiac. Aries was really interesting. That just came through. I was like, yep, this is the one. For you as well, your song came through like an arrow, which is fitting. You are symbolized by the archer. Just, it was like an arrow. It was like, I know what this is. It's true by Spandau Ballet. That is the song for you, Sagittarius, because I think you're on a perpetual quest to find the truth, aren't you? You know, and there isn't anywhere you won't look. You'll look everywhere. But where you will look is quite interesting. Um, I think you're very interested in man-made systems of thought. So if we have a look again at the recap and see what you're ruled by Jupiter, right, which is all about wisdom. Uh, and if we have a look at what your sign rules, it rules the original ninth house, higher knowledge, religious institutions, universities. All right, so that thing that I was talking about, man-made truth. One of the key lines in this, in this song is, I know this much is true. And that gets repeated over and over and over again. That is a really important line in this song. And he's singing, I know this much is true, right? I know that precisely this much is true. And let's say this is the veil, okay? 
the veil between this world and all things otherworldly, right? So what are all these religious institutions and academic institutions and institutions of any kind, what are they doing? They're saying, well, I know this much is true. I've used my senses and I know this is for real. This is true. What's going on beyond here? That's up for debate. Um, so if we go through the lyrics, we've got so true, funny how it seems, always in time, but never in line for dreams. That's a really interesting line right there, always in time, but never in line for dreams. I have heard this from one really famous astrologer who said the point about Sagittarius is that they always want to have that dream on the horizon. They want to have that dream out there. They don't particularly want to achieve the dream. I always thought that was really interesting and if that is indeed always the case for Sagittarians, it might be for some and it might be some Sagittarians don't agree with that. But if that is the case, that you always love having a dream on the horizon because it gets you to move, it gets you to move forward, it gets you to go places, then this line really holds true for that, always in time but never in line for dreams. The lines continue, I bought a ticket to the world but now I've come back again. Why do I find it hard to write the next line, oh I want the truth to be said? You know, I bought a ticket to the world. Absolutely. Sagittarius, that is what you do. You know, in your part of the zodiac here, which is the ninth house, and then we've got Gemini up here, which is the third house. Down here, we've got long distance travel. Up here, we've got the short journeys. And of course the line would be, I bought a ticket to the world because you're all about those really long distance journeys, aren't you? You know, you love to go. You like to be going. It's the going, you know, it's not so much the destination, it's the going. I think that's a better way of capturing uh, that point that was being made earlier about having a, a dream on the horizon. It really is about the going for you guys, the journey. So I bought a ticket to the world, but now I've come back again. Why do I find it hard to write the next line? Oh, I want the truth to be said. Now, if you're a truth seeker, it would be hard to write any line, you know, because, you know, why do I find it hard to write the next line? It's because you're very much about the truth and you need to know that it's true. Otherwise, there's no point in even putting pen to paper, um, which means that what does come from you is very well considered. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. I think all signs can learn from you on that point. Um, you know, these days with social media, people are just so eager to bash out a tweet, you know, and they haven't even thought about it and they're very eager to, you know, at all levels of society, uh, at all levels of politics, for example. I mean, people are just eager to, to send things out there and you guys aren't like that at all. You know, you're considered. You, I bet if you give a compliment, it really means something to someone. Do you know what I mean? Because you, you're not rash in that way. You're not just giving it flippantly. Why do I find it hard to write the next line? Oh, I want the truth to be said. You know, you'll think about things before you, you commit. And I think that's really wonderful. Uh, always slipping from my hands, sands a time of its own. I know this much is true. I know this much is true. You know, and what's beyond the veil, you know, that's debatable. Uh, I think terrific debate has come out of come out of this sign as well. People who are really committed to to what is true on this side, man-made systems of thought, man-made truth, five sensory truth. We could even say, um, 
you know, this is really making me think about Einstein who, you see, I tend to think the ninth house Sagittarian truth is what we've got going on here, but what's beyond the veil, the otherworldly stuff, is 12th house truth, right? And Einstein was a brilliant man who straddled both worlds. He has ninth house energy. Let me bring him up actually on my system because I was thinking about him this afternoon and I want to make sure I've got this right because he's definitely got a lot of Piscean energy, huge amount. So, I mean, when it came to the knowledge that he was bringing to Earth, he was pulling that straight from that otherworldly, unbounded side, you know, uh, where there is no structure. Let's have a look. So he's got four planets in Pisces, four planets you know, in that otherworldly realm. And he's got Jupiter in the ninth house. I mean, that's fantastic. That's a really, really great place for Jupiter to be. So here's a man who straddled both worlds. Uh, you know, he's got that man-made, I know this much is true. And he's got access to the otherworldly side of things. So he's a terrific example to talk about. Um, the other thing is that I wanted to say about this song is that, yes, we can see it in the lyrics, but also what's going on visually. So we've got a man in a suit. That's perfect because all of these man-made systems of thought, it's full of men in suits, this house. You know what I mean? You think about it, religious institutions, uh, academics, they're all wearing suits. Um, who else is here? You know, I tend to think that management consulting belongs here as well. Management consultants, I think, are very much ninth house people. If we go back to the motto, I philosophize, that's what management consultants are doing. If you've ever worked with a company like Unilever and their marketing team, you know that they philosophize for days on things like trivial things. Well, I think I kind of think it's trivial, trivial things like shampoos or uh, ice creams or tissue paper or, you know, things like that, everyday regular consumer goods. And they will philosophize about these products. And, you know, there'll be a team of management consultants that might come in and they'll create a brand onion or they'll create like all these maps and methodologies and all these different kind of ways of pinning down all these abstract things you know all these abstract philosophies they'll look at a consumer and they'll say well this these are the values of that consumer you know and um to me that's kind of well i mean it's interesting that that's quite a big activity going on in humanity you know trying to figure out how to extract money from the everyday householder, uh, I mean, the extravagance, you know, on, on that side of things. Like, we're just buying a, a little bottle of shampoo, but, you know, there's teams of people that are creating brand methodologies and, and maps and models and men in suits, basically, who are, who are saying, well, I know this much is true and I know that you can extract 10p more from these people and all that kind of thing. So I, I do think that um, this house is representative of, of a lot of that sort of activity as well. Uh, I've got another thing here, which is um, the elephant story. So what's that all about? This really relates to religion. And this is, you know, when it comes to I know this much is true. Um, I can't remember where I heard this. It was at a, I used to go to these philosophy classes in central London and... This story is coming from, from those classes that I used to go to, and I'll try and quote it correctly. Basically, each religion is a bit like three blind men who are each touching a different part of the elephant. So one blind man is holding the trunk, and he can feel the trunk, and he can feel what it's like, and he's saying, oh, I know what this creature is. You know, it's like this. I think because because I'm holding the snake, the the trunk, it's it's like a snake, right? So that's 
where he's at with with describing what the whole animal is. He can only feel the trunk, but he's saying, yep, I know what this animal is, it's a snake. And there's another guy who is holding the leg and he says, no, it's definitely not a snake. It doesn't feel like that to me, I can feel it. And um, it's it's more like a tree because this, this part feels quite trunk-like. You know, he's holding the leg. And then there's another guy who is touching the side of the elephant and he's saying no 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 it's not a snake and it's not a tree you know there's this big expanse and it goes on for ages and I think this this feels like a wall this thing is a building something like that I mean I'm probably misquoting the story and I'm probably telling it quite badly but <laughs> sorry but uh, basically you get the point right each one thinks they know I know this much is true. They're all touching the same animal, but each has a slightly different view on it. And I think that story offers a good uh, analogy for religions. All religions are touching a different part of God, you know, and they all claim to be the one to know God. But, you know, they're all correct, but then they don't know, you know. And, yeah, I find that, that story to be really interesting. So when it comes to I know this much is true, is it really? You know, it's got to be questioned. I've got a note here that um, there's also the person who writes a PhD about honey. So this is something that Eckhart Tolle brings up where he talks about what it is to taste honey. You know, you might write a PhD on it. You might know the exact pattern of the dance that the bee does when he goes back to his beehive and he has to communicate to the other bees, this is where you go to get the honey. He has to do a little dance. It's very complex. It's, it's the whole world going on there. So you might write a PhD about all of this. But until you taste honey, you, you don't really know what it is. And... and you know, I know this much is true. And then there's that otherworldly side that's experiential that perhaps you can't even put into words, you know, and that, that might well be half of the equation, you know, that or more, you know. Um, yeah, and I, I've got a note here saying the person who tastes the honey is in the 12th house. So you can see Einstein was amazing. He had it all because, uh, you know, yes, he could write the PhD, he could be a ninth house guy, but he could taste the honey. He was 12th house as well. So Sagittarius, my goodness, what's great about you? There are so many things. You care about the truth. You care about, you know, getting it right. Why do I find it hard to write the next line? You know, you really think before you act. That's so wonderful. If only more people could do that. You can philosophize on anything, as we saw with the management consulting industry. You know, they can um, create an entire industry out of something as simple as a shampoo bottle. Pretty amazing. Uh, you guys really enjoy examining where your power is invested. You will challenge and debate things. So if you are interested in astrology, which you must be, and you're still watching this video, uh, I can recommend... I've got a video called Change Your Karma, which is where I explore the concept of how much free will do we really have. Now, I could imagine that you would love to study something like that. So dip into that video if you are interested. Um, and I've got a note here saying, what, regardless of whatever you do for a living, there is a natural teacher in you. And please share your wisdom with the world. You are a much loved and needed part of the zodiac. You know, we need deep thinkers. We need people who can go the distance and dig deep in our abstract realms. You know what I mean? And to model and map the abstract realms and, and to um, help us navigate, to help us navigate different choices in life. You know, what, what we're here to do, astrology helps us do that. You know, I tend to see astrology as being a bit fifth house, but I, I think it's ninth as well. Uh, definitely 
definitely both. So do I have a tip for you, Sagittarius? For every sign I've been giving them a little tip and Sagittarius, I'm actually going to break with convention. For every single other sign I have been advising that they go into their opposite sign and take a leaf out of their book. You know, if life is getting a bit boring and if you want to shake things up a little bit um, or things are a bit stayed or you just want to do something different, go into your polar opposite sign and take a leaf out of their book. And for you, that would be Gemini, if that was your tip. And I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to direct you here. My apologies Sagittarius, the camera froze, it's been doing that today, this is the second time it's frozen on me, so I don't know why that is, I'm going to have to investigate and find out what's playing up with my camera, but I think it cut off at the point where I was saying that your tip is going to be a little bit unique, for every other sign I've been telling them to take a leaf out of, you know, their polar opposite sign, which for you is Gemini. And then I said, scratch that, that's not going to be the tip. I'm breaking with convention, I'm doing something new, and I'm going to suggest, and being the innovative people that you are, I'm sure you will love this, I'm suggesting that hang out here in Pisces, uh, see what they're like, because they are, Pisces is a fellow Jupiterian. You are ruled by Jupiter and Pisces is also ruled by Jupiter because I'm teaching the sidereal Vedic system and that is going to be a fun place for you because your masters of I know this much is true we've got the veil here and then the otherworldly stuff is here and that's the 12th house truth and Jupiter knows that very well and because you're ruled by Jupiter you've got a terrific potential to do the Einstein thing of being highly academic and channeling great insights and wisdom and innovation and new things from the other side, from, you know, the realms that our five senses don't particularly access. So that is my tip for you. Um, you know, head over on into Pisces, perhaps watch their video if you want to get some inspiration, but um, do learn a bit more about Pisces. Uh, that, that would definitely be my tip for you. So I want to thank you, Sagittarius, for watching this video. You are a much loved part of the zodiac, as is every single sign of the zodiac. You know, each sign has so much to give to all of humanity and um, you know you are a much loved and needed part of the zodiac you are so incredibly wise please share all of your wisdom and knowledge with the rest of us and if you'd like you can join me in the next sign which is Capricorn <laughs>